Welcome back to the show. Champion roller skater to makeup artist to household name, David Hartnells delivered the secrets of the rich and famous and down and out celebs for decades. And it's all in his new book. Here it is. And David joins me on the line now from Auckland. Welcome to Good Morning and congratulations. Well, thank you for having me on the program and thank you for reading the book. So many people don't who interview you. And I believe, the, uh, well, I heard this morning that you read it in the bath. So good for you. <laughs> it's my favourite place. So it's looking a little tatty. But I really enjoyed the book. And, you know, it's a candid look at your life. And I learned so many things. And first up, that your name wasn't originally David Hartnell. Why no. did you change it? And what was your original name? Well, the original name was Seckerton. I was born David Seckerton. My mother and father separated when I was four, and he was never spoken about, even to this day. He just completely vanished. And then my mother remarried, and the name was Ward, and it didn't have a show-busy sort of flair to it. So I thought, mm, let's change this. So I was in Australia um, working for Revlon, the cosmetic company over there, and I thought, Hartnell, now that's a fashion name. David Hartnell seems to go very well. And that's how, why I changed it, because it had that flow. I then wrote to Norman Hartnell while I was in Australia and said, look, I would like to change my name and I've admired what you've done. And he said, well, if you ever come to London, look me up. Well, I did go to London and uh, I didn't look him up until I'd actually got a job in London. And then I went to meet him. And I think he was so gobsmacked that I didn't want to cash in and say, can you help me get a job? That we became firm friends right up until, unfortunately, he passed away. Lovely gentleman. He opened lots of doors for me. And he said, now, when you ring the magazines and, and talk to people on the telephone, just say it's Hartnell calling and you'll get through and then it's up to you to sell yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did. Isn't it? But now, of course, Hartnell's brilliant. Hollywood, you know, is quite a nice merger as well. And let's talk about your trip from New Zealand as a champion roller skater. You headed over to Australia, but you didn't have a job. How did you get into makeup artistry? Well, roller skating was my life in New Zealand, and um, I represented the, the, the country on several occasions and so on and so forth, and went as far as we could. Then I taught roller skating, and during that time, we did little skating shows. And, you know, you do the lighting, you do the costuming, and somebody else, and I got landed the makeup. I have no idea why. And that's what got me interested in makeup. And when I went to Australia, as I say, I had no qualifications, left school when I was 15, I thought, I know about makeup looked in the paper and Revlon wanted a makeup artist. Now, little did I know at that particular point in time that uh, they were looking at a makeup artist they had already in France they were going to bring to Australia. And as luck would have it, I just went and did their five-day course, um, went to see the head of the company. And now, those days, they were unbelievable goddesses sitting behind, you know, wonderful desks and so on and so forth. And she said, I want you to take off my makeup and do me a complete new look. And I thought, oh, my God. So I thought, less is best, less is best. Did that, and I got the job. I met the lady about 20 odd years later and I said, what was the story? And she told mm. me that I had a show business flair that she really liked. And I toured all Australia and then went up to the east and I was the first makeup artist in Australia in department stores, not in the motion picture or television business, but in department stores. So I travelled all over Australia and the Far East. So it was a great opening. It was amazing how, I mean, you had such gumption. You then went to London and then you ended up and you basically took America by storm. And I love the story of how you sort of did a job exchange with one of your colleagues. He went to the UK, you went to New York. How on earth did you get to be lucky enough to go to the opening of Studio 54? And what year was that? Well, all it's all like, uh, I, I believe you've been in the right place at the right time. What happened, I, I went to London, I worked for Maybelline in London, and I went over to New York, and the makeup artist in New York um, wanted to come to London. So we went to the companies in New York and in London and said, look, uh, he, we do exactly the same jobs, can we swap? So we swapped houses, we swapped cars, we swapped everything, <laughs> and I went to live in New York. Now, uh, they, then there was the chit-chat about this new uh, Studio 54 opening, and we all went, oh, another club, another club. I think it was dollars to get in which was humongous <laughs> price anyway this huge opening came and i was doing a lot of society women in the particular time in new york and uh, a, a few celebrities as well and she asked me if i would go to the opening of studio 54 with her i did several makeups and so on so i went with this woman you won't know her name she's a model in new york of the time she's no longer with us unfortunately now and that's what got me the entree into there and then i got a pass that i could go into studio 54 which was extraordinary now i look back on it I go, I can't believe I was there. That's it right. was just a golden time. And you were there when Liza Minnelli was at her height, all those oh. incredible stars. Opening night, everybody was there, from Andy Warhol to Diana Ross to Phyllis Diller, you name it, they were all there. Holston, the fashion uh, designer, they all went to Studio 54. Now, you mentioned Phyllis Diller because you have a very special relationship with Phyllis. Tell me about that. 
It was while I was in Sydney, uh, back in the 60s, and I was walking home from David Jones in Sydney where I was uh, doing La Boutique. It was a Revlon um, cosmetic counter there. And I passed the Chevron Hilton Hotel. That's how I used to walk past it every day. And I saw Phyllis Diller was coming. Now, I, I knew of Phyllis Diller, and I thought, she's wild and wacky. Why don't I do a makeover on her? So that from the wild and wacky to a, 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 a glamour makeup. So I set the whole thing up. And in that fact, the um, Ita Buttrose was the reporter who covered it, who's a... Uh, one of the mm, megastars in Australia in the media. And we did this, and from that day back in the 60s, we became firm friends. And uh, we still are friends today. We were there a couple of years ago uh, with her. She's, she's going to be How 90, old is she? I think she's going to be 94 in the, four, the no, 17th of July this year. And 94. unbelievable woman. I love it a bit. How did you segue from the makeup artistry side of things into the gossip or the, you know, the celeb reporting, which you did in LA, I understand, for New Zealand? What happened was simply this, that when you would go out and lecture on makeup, you had done a lot of makeups on celebrities. I'm talking about like Elizabeth Taylor. At one point we did a thing for Condé Nast Publications in London. Uh, they had Harper's and Queen. They were separate magazines in those days. And she arrived, and with the diamond ring, I might add, wow. and took the diamond ring off and put it on the makeup counter. We did the makeup. The hairdresser did She wore a wig at this particular point in time. It became a very iconic picture of her, black hair with a white streak through it, holding her little white doll. And we're just about to do the shoot, and she said, Oh, can you hand me the ring, honey? <laughs> and I handed her, and I'm going, like, Yeah, okay, you know. Oh. And it was the ring because security was with her the whole time. So when you went out to talk to people about makeup, they always say, uh, uh, What was Elizabeth Taylor like? What mm. are these celebrities? You must get it too. They'll say, I, I know really you interviewed like? somebody, but really, what are they like? Sort of thing. And after that, I thought, Hmm, okay, I'll write a column. So I started to write a gossip column. And my first one was in the New Zealand Woman's Weekly. Jean Wishart was the editor way back in those days. And she only wanted good gossip, bless her heart. Isn't, look, and look how far you've come. We've only touched the surface of your book. It's been great to have you on the show. There's a, some very moving stuff, actually, about you speaking about your mother and also about you finding... Uh, some lost family so people will have to buy the book to read that and it's really great to have you on the show congratulations once again david hartnell memoirs of a gossip columnist and what are the last words you use in the book which well, is always how you sign off <laughs> well thank you sarah until next time we meet my lips are sealed wonderful stuff thanks so much